So let's apply that on a macro level. You have the left today with Generation Z, and what do they want to do? They want to ban Halloween costumes for being offensive. They want to ban video games. They want to ban Merry Christmas and Christmas displays. And they actually, hey, this is a true story. We have an overlay. If you want to breed an entire generation of conservatives, okay, leftists, ban Halloween candy, which they are. <laughs> So I want to talk about Generation Z and the, the 2020 election. When I started um, doing this, well, okay. <laughs> yes, we do have them every four years. <laughs> what if every four years is looking at this? Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Whoa, 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 wait, hold on. Let me go to my Apple calendar. Whoa! <laughs> Let me grab my chair for this shit. Uh -huh. I love the chairs. So Andrew Brown. <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing creepier than a man dressed as the Joker yelling, chair! <laughs> like if that were in a if that were in a piece of, of literary fiction, that would be foreshadowing to guaranteed clown rape. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. No, no, for sure. There's no doubt. Like for sure. Chair! What? Shit <laughs> down! <laughs> What? Joaquin's a genius! What? Jared Leto's an ass! I don't understand what you're saying. And I don't like it. <laughs> he's very, I, people know, I'm actually terrified of clowns. He's right in the front row. Yeah, it's making me uncomfortable the entire time. And he's right next to a hot dog who cheered for my nipples, so... Yeah. Good! I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Howdy, a <A&M. laughs> Um... So, Andrew Breitbart, he famously said that politics are uh, downstream of culture. And I will say this, it proved, I think, more true than ever in 2016 when President Trump upset the establishment, both on the left and the right, because he really was the first sort of cultural candidate that we had ever seen. And that's why he won. I think that's why a lot of people supported him, right? Yeah. Okay. I think, I mean, if you look at what Donald Trump did, and, you know, listen, I'm very straightforward about this. In the primaries, he wasn't my number one pick. Um, I think there were a lot of people uh, were, were cautiously optimistic. And I've been, pretty, I've been pretty damn happy and also wildly entertained since he's yes. been president. <laughs> he not only pissed off Democrats, he not only pissed off Republicans, I mean, he changed the way that polling data is gathered at this point. No one can trust it. He changed the way that presidents communicate with the public, and that's all because of culture. That's because of new media. That's because he's a cultural icon. And now you have the media industrial complex. That's my term, but I want you guys to go forward and use it, because every time you have some Bernie guy, the military industrial complex, say media entertainment industrial complex, and watch their head explode, and then it'll take 90% of your paycheck. But I want you to know... <laughs> This also includes, we used to think of media as traditional media, cable, television, right? But now more than ever, it includes big tech. And big tech has spent uh, the entire first term attempting to reverse what they see as a disaster, what they see as their moral imperative is to fight Donald Trump. And in case you think I'm making this up, you know, anyone who watches our show knows that we list sources and I try not to make an argument for someone I disagree with uh, if I can let them make their argument for themselves. So lest you have forgotten, let's take a quick uh, trip down memory lane to Google's <laughs> internal meeting. <laughs> after the election. Can we go to that? that no, Google's this is probably not the most joyous uh, TJF we have had. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, let's face it, most uh, people here are uh, pretty upset and pretty sad for uh, because of the election. And I certainly find Shut up, this election crack. Uh, deeply offensive. And I know many of you do too. Back a very sad short text um, that read, people are leaving, staff is crying, we're gonna lose. Uh, that was the first moment I really felt like we were gonna lose. And it was this massive like, <laughs> kick in the gut that we were gonna lose. And it was really painful. For the US immigration system. I can't believe that, that things didn't go exactly how I wanted them. Any, any immediate changes after January's inauguration of the new administration, highly unlikely. Uh, but we, are, of course, will keep a close watch on this. Our policy office in, in DC is all over it. And we will keep you informed, but you, we will keep Googler's interests at heart. Okay, Google's I don't, I mean, what, what, at what point do you get a haircut? You have a national meeting. The yeah. first guy who looks like a clothes. hobo, and the second lady who just, I guess she's been crying all day. Anyway, I don't wow. want to get into ad hominem, but they look weird. 
Uh, someone get him a chair. So here's the deal. If 2016 was the World War I of culture wars, as the term has been coined, 2020 is going to be the World War II. And more importantly, I want to talk about this, in 2020, more important than ever, is going to be you, Generation Z. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I, I actually applaud you guys, and I'll tell you why. It's super important because the exact same establishment, uh, and we use this term, what I'm talking about is the media entertainment industrial complex. So people say, well, what do you mean when you say establishment? When I'm talking about the media here and their targeting of Generation Z, I'm talking about ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, CNN, MSNBC, everything not named Fox News, every band you listen to, every single Hollywood junket and conference, every single company. When people want to talk about big money in politics, go look at the biggest companies in the world. One through five are all big tech companies who overwhelm overwhelmingly support liberal candidates and directly the DNC platform. These, so have I made it clear what the establishment is? I want to make sure that we're not on murky territory because I don't want Cenk Uyghur to be like, that's bullshit! Because <laughs> sometimes people throw out establishment like, well, what do you mean? I don't know, people I don't like. Ah, piss off. So that's the establishment. <laughs> They're targeting you, Generation Z specifically. Uh, and let me tell you why. That's because Generation Z, which is you know, the next generation below millennials, some people are like, what's Z? It sounds it like is. a hip-hop group. No, it's not. Uh, they're not opening up for crisscross anytime sir. soon. Uh, I said crisscross because I'm a millennial, so that's a reference I still understand. <laughs> <laughs> One guy cheers, yeah. good, from He's his chair. There. So Generation Z, you guys need to know this, is the most conservative generation to have come along in decades, okay? <laughs> This is not a doom and gloom scenario here. I know we get that a lot on cable news from both the left and the right, and it gets clicks, but like Linus with his little blankie, I bring you tidings of great joy. You guys are incredibly conservative, but the media, the establishment, wants to engineer all of you into thinking otherwise. And boomers, I want you to be listening, because a lot of you think that the culture war is lost. A lot of you think that this country is going to hell in a handbasket. It couldn't be further from the truth. If you go to CNN and Teen Vogue, because that's still a thing, I guess. <laughs> Teen Vogue. <laughs> Um, they want you to believe that Generation Z is the most progressive generation of all time, right? These are articles that have actually been published. It could not be further from the truth. Let me make my case here. Uh, and the phenomenon, by the way, is global. So let's go to the UK. I want to make sure I have my stats right here because we actually care about that. Uh, a recent UK study, I know, uh, that's sort of implying that Surprising. some people don't. Who might that be? <laughs> I don't know. People who deny, deny the Armenian Genocide. I'm just hinting. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know what you're saying, but... Uh, How dare you! Actually, it's... It, no. <laughs> Please. <laughs> this is just like my greatest hits of awful. <laughs> my mom is so ashamed. Oh, no. <laughs> she had to glue this patchy beard on. She's like, why can't you grow a real beard? I'm like, mom, because I suck. <laughs> I'm terrible. The Joker and the hot dog nipple guy is more well-off than I am. So I want to make sure I get the stat right. This is global. In the UK, where a lot of Americans don't even believe there are true conservatives, I mean, we, we understand Brexit, yeah. but the idea of sort of conservative in comparison to the United States. There was a recent study, 59% of Generation Z respondents said that their views were moderate or conservative. Now compare that with 83% of millennials and 85% of uh, Generation X or Gen Xers who identified as quite or very liberal. I think we have that overlay there from uh, Forbes and Business Insider. Did you guys get that? I can't see yeah. the overlays from where I am. So here, here's what's even more interesting though, right? Because you go, well, 59% identify as moderate or conservative. That doesn't mean a whole lot. Let's dive a little bit deeper, uh, especially into their party affiliation in the United States. From 2008 to 2016, Generation Z Republicans increased by 1%. That doesn't seem like much, okay? Stay with me here. Uh, independence increased by about 6%. That doesn't seem like much. Here's the kicker. Here's the cold water. I hope you have your mouth guard on like I was talking about earlier, a reference that I don't fully understand, but I heard the Ultimate Warrior say it once, <laughs> so I thought it was cool. Democrats decreased with Generation Z by 8%. Oh. And I know there are some leftists watching right now going like, but this is just, it's just a phase, right? They'll grow out of it, right? No, okay. Uh, remember, baby boomers, okay, who are known for their support of Trump, right, the boomer generation, they're often referred to derogatorily by other leftists like, boomers, hey, listen, you know what? Thank you, boomers, for 
our country and for electing our president. I'm grateful to you. I see a few of you in the audience. I can, I can only spot you by the reflection off your chrome domes, but that's okay. <laughs> you just saw my nipples, so it's an even trade. Yeah. We both have dirt in each other. Remember, baby boomers who are now known, right? They're known as conservatives, right? You probably, your parents are probably baby boomers. We think of them as one of the most conservative generations. They were the most liberal far left generation you could imagine uh, when they were younger, right? 1979, the 28 to 39 year old demographic, they identified 45% Democrat, only 19% Republican. These were the people who were out there smoking pot and putting daisies in fucking cops' rifles, okay? <laughs> so the point that I make here is that boomers were far more liberal, okay, far more left than Generation Z is today. If you go to boomers back when they were in their 20s or their 30s, they were much more liberal than Generation Z is today. And here's just something that's important, you need to understand this. That doesn't change, right? So 59% in the UK are identifying as conservative or moderate. The chances of that 59% shrinking as they grow up, as they pay bills, as they get a job, as they have children, statistically is almost impossible. The likelihood is that they become more conservative, that that 59% goes to 60, 70, 50. I went back to 59. And, and I want to explain this. Uh, how many people here are, are millennials uh, as opposed to Generation Z? Okay. So this is, a, this is something I think a lot of people miss, right? Uh, millennials, we grew up in the era of, of George W. Bush, right? And at that point, there was, there was Green Day, and there was sort of Christian conservative was the establishment. And people wanted to, to rebel and ah, rock against Bush and no effects and shitty punk music and bah, Avril Lavigne, skater boy, and we hate our parents, and they're all conservative, right? Because Americans are counterculturalist by, by design. I mean, we, unlike Canada, where I was raised, right, who bent over and kissed the ring of the royalty, America flipped, stop, what are you, diamondback rattlesnake? <laughs> I mentioned Canada, it's like <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's not only distracting, it's a little gay, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> not unlike my home country of Canada. You just walk down the streets of Montreal, it's a bunch of people going <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're doing it. Um, and Jean-Guy Tremblay, it's just them. Uh, oh, that so guy's cool. Americans are a counterculture by design, right? Now, that's what we grew up with as millennials. But let's look at Generation Z. They grew up, many of you, you grew up in the most lopsided, authoritarian, leftist American, uh, America ever, okay? Think about this. Not only when Generation Z grew up, we didn't have, they didn't have George Bush. A lot of these people, they, they don't remember, right? All, nearly all of them, they wouldn't remember 9-11. Not only did leftists have the White House, Right, for, for two years from 08 to, to 10. Not only do they have the White House, not only do they have the Senate, not only do they have the House of Representatives, but they had the entire media, the entire entertainment industry. Does anyone here remember when Barack Obama won, there was that video where they were pledging allegiance to be of service to Barack Obama? Round of applause, anyone remember that? It was like Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher and the Red Hot Chili Peppers pledging allegiance to a president. How scary. Important people. What was very, that? Very important people. How dare you, sir? <laughs> I can't hear, we have this feedback going on, but you know, I'm sure it was very clever. It wasn't. Do you have a chance? <laughs> Sorry, I feel bad now, but uh, I don't. I shouldn't feel that, but they were pledging allegiance to a man, Barack Obama. You had, uh, well, I remember, Ash anyone remember anyone else? It was Demi Moore, Ashton Kutcher, Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, that guy from the Avengers. It's a bunch of losers. I don't know. But here's, here's the thing, that was the backboard, right? Any kind of rebellion, any kind of counterculture, it's rebelling against something. So, you know, you have a backboard. And when we were young, you had George W. Bush and you had sort of the conservative establishment and Dick Cheney, that's how they saw it. These kids had Barack Obama. They had Nancy Pelosi. They had pledging allegiance to Barack Obama. They had far left everything. And not only that, so you combine that with this sort of natural anti-authoritarian just having a problem with general, you know, the, the mainstream culture. Um, but leftists, okay, suck. They really do. They suck. <laughs> They suck, I, I wasn't saying they suck, you shouldn't have cheered for that, now you're gonna feel very ashamed. I was saying they suck the fun out of everything. Yes, yes. Come on, they turn chairs into love sacks at the mall. <laughs> you guys want, now are we cheering love sacks? All right, We're let me give you an example. People love love sacks, man. Can I, uh, I wanna tell you a personal story, okay? It's a true story, I don't tell stories that aren't true. 
Sometimes I do, but this is true. <laughs> so when I was a kid, I, uh, one of my best friends, we were going to this sledding hill in Montreal, uh, or South Shore, it was called Place Plamondon, okay? You would just go, it was wildly unsafe. There was no chairlift. There was a place where some people, you could see some footprints and a trail of blood from where all the children had fallen before you. We had something called a GT snow racer, which if you don't remember, it looked like a jet ski you would ride in the snow, but it just immediately racked your testicles and you regretted all of your decisions. <laughs> So anyway, it was a sledding place, and I was in the car with my friend, my best friend at the time, and his dad was in the car. And uh, I remember his dad stopping and asking for directions. We got lost, and he asked this woman, and she said, yeah, yeah, you know, go left, and there, you're gonna go to right, and you're gonna go down Long Guy, Place Palmondo. And I turned to my friend, I, just made a I was 11 years old, and I said, well, that's it, we're never gonna get to Place Palmondo now. And he goes, why, Stephen? I said, because your dad asked a woman for directions. <laughs> right? It's not that funny, this is a true story. And then he goes, but he thought it was hysterical, okay? He thought it was as hysterical as Joker thinks murder is here. <laughs> or hot dog with my nipples. Yes. So he's laughing, and he, he laughs, he goes, hey dad, 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 did you hear what Steven just said? And he says, no. He says, Steven just said that you will never find Place Plamondon because you asked a woman for directions. <laughs> and his dad tilted, because he was in the front seat, tilted the mirror back, aiming it at me, so I just Ooh. see his eyes and his stupid... Ooh. And his stupid little Bruce Springsteen looking head. This doesn't matter to you, but to me, I'm revisiting this. <laughs> I'm just opening old wounds. And he looks in the mirror and he's looking back at me. And he goes, uh, that comment is incredibly offensive and I won't tolerate that kind of sexism ever again in this car. And I said, fuck you. <laughs> I seriously did, I'm sorry, I don't want to, but I said, and of course a call went to my parents. I was wrong to say that last part. But think about that for a second. That was my, that was my first experience as a kid with a parent who didn't have a sense of humor, who couldn't stand fun. I mean, I had, no, I had done so much worse than that. That was what got me in trouble. Now, let's imagine, and I never wanted to go to his house again, okay? That's the point. I never wanted to go to that kid's house again. I was like, that kid's dad, I want nothing to do with him. So, let's apply that on a macro level. You have the left today with Generation Z, and what do they want to do? They want to ban Halloween costumes for being offensive. They want to ban video games. They want to ban Merry Christmas and Christmas displays. And they actually, hey, this is a true story, we have an overlay. If you want to breed an entire generation of conservatives, okay, leftists, ban Halloween candy, which they are. They want right. to ban Halloween candy. <laughs> and if you read that, okay, rattlesnakes. And if you read that article, these people are talking, it's a serious article at HuffPo. And this person's saying, well, we actually have had great success. We give out playing cards that are made of paper and recyclable gum. Oh, that sounds like the Ugh. party of your neighborhood. Ugh. So what does that do? That creates a rejection. And we already have a generation who is wildly conservative, Generation Z. Do you think that banning Halloween candy in the name of saving the earth because AOC created a five page bill that I doubt she could even read is going to win more conservatives or less? And here's something else too. Generation Z is super conservative in spite of all of their surroundings, in spite of all of your surroundings. Grade school teachers, only 27% are Republicans. Right? If you go to college professors, that number drops to 9%. And about, I talked about this last year, roughly 40% of colleges have no conservative professors at all. Think of that. Do you think that you could find 40% of colleges with, with zero black professors? Okay, do you think you could find any college with zero black professors? Okay, how about any college with zero lesbian professors? How about any college with zero black lesbian professors? <laughs> so we have more colleges with black lesbian professors than conservative professors. And you wanna tell me that you give a rat's ass about diversity? And despite being brainwashed overwhelmingly by the democratic establishment, right, by teachers, professors, from grade school all the way through college, Generation Z is inspiring to me, because listen, I'm a millennial. Most of my generation sucks, okay? Yes, this is We're correct. worse than hot dog nipple guy. We're not. <laughs> so I look at Generation Z, I say, hey, you've got it figured out. You play a little too much Call of Duty. I don't know what this whole Mountain Dew game fuel thing is, but you know, I mean, <laughs> you, take, you, you take the win where you can get it. So, and this is why it's important it ties into uh, big tech, okay? Generation Z is resisting the leftism, of course, of the American education and the media. Well, here's a, here's a reason why. More and more of you are getting your news from non-traditional outlets, right? 
by round of applause, how many young people here have cable? Oh, oh wow, that was surprising. Not quite the, uh, the, the uproar as I would hear for chairs, but okay. Yeah. And chairs, somewhere Brian yeah. Selter's going, ah, ah, I'm totally straight. Ah. <laughs> we get it. Uh, <laughs> but here's the thing Te big tech, they saw how dangerous, right, that this was, that their power was in 2016. And so, because most of you get your news from non traditional outlets, they've now taken measures to throttle, to shadow ban, and blacklist conservative content. How many people here have been following that, right? You guys know about it. What's so bizarre is I mentioned Brie Larson, you hiss me. I mentioned big tech throttling and blacklisting conservative kind, you're like, yeah! We don't have a crowd animator like Lily Singh. Clap, yeah, yeah. Isn't she a funny brown lady? Yeah. Let's take down the people who are hanging from the nooses. Aww. I meant they killed themselves, I killed themselves because it's unfunny, okay? It's not as bad as you think it is. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> so big tech, the big tech giants, they want to censor or curate, and I know people don't want to use this word censor because we're not talking about the government, but a culture of censorship, okay? So don't hang me on these words. Why? Um, because they said, the story they sold you was that they were concerned about radicalism, right? Who, who else here remembers the infamous New York Times article and a study that was published everywhere claiming that conservative and alt-light content led to radicalization of the youth on YouTube? Yeah, okay. <laughs> That was the weakest boo I've ever heard. <laughs> it's like, it's like, boo! <laughs> it was like Casper the Friendly Ghost, <laughs> if she were cute. Like, if, if I were a single young person, I would want to date you just based on that boo. <laughs> boo! It sounded like Neil Patrick Harris in The Matrix. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> um, anyway, that was a famous study, you guys remember. To say that I questioned the methodology of a study that listed Philip DeFranco as a representative of the alt-right would be an understatement. Here's the thing, though. There is a new, more recent study that actually shows conservative content, the kind of content that you watch, de-radicalizes young people. And this, doesn't come, this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who actually watches our content or like-minded content. We are the only content creators who consistently, regularly advocate against violence, who encourage open dialogues, and we encourage the rationalization of our own opinions, right? We've always prioritized, we've tried to, we've tried to, we've always tried to prioritize critical thinking, evidence-based thinking, proper, uh, proper sourcing, and yes, yes, dick jokes. We do that How as- How dare you? We dare, you Swedish tart! <laughs> I've had about my fill of her. Can you imagine when she turns 18? Oh my god, oh. what a nightmare. <laughs> oh, okay, don't criticize her because she's 16 and thrust herself in front of the political spotlight. I get it. Ha <laughs> ha. Boo. Boo. Boop. <laughs> 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 She's like, the, I don't know, the worst I'll say about, about Greta, and I, I, the, uh -oh. I won't say anything. Yes. The worst I'll say about Greta, like she's, she's the kind of kid who'd be like, boop, I've got your nose. No, you haven't! <laughs> you have not stolen my, my nose. My nose is right here! <laughs> Shmurgy, burgy, burgy, hit my nose! <laughs> That's it. If I get banned yeah. for that, you guys were witnesses. It didn't go any further than that. And Vox, well, he was banned because he said that she didn't have a sense of humor about the got your nose joke, so, uh, okay. <laughs> Go hire another game. Uh, here's the thing. Big tech was never concerned about radicalization, all right? I want to make that really clear here. They're just concerned, they're terrified of what you, Generation Z, are already becoming. And so they threw out this idea that you're being radicalized, okay? Do, do you need any evidence that they're afraid, not of radicalization, but just any dissenting point of view? Okay, look at the results. I want you to do this when you're done. Look at the results of YouTube's latest crackdown on independent creators, okay? They've directed traffic overwhelmingly away from non-traditional outlets like people here. By the way, do you guys realize we couldn't get the venue uh, because it was last minute. This times three and a half is how many of you showed up for this show. Yeah.
And, and I really don't say that to brag. I am so humbled. Like, I had a bucket right off stage because I was about to throw up before I come. I have horrible stage fright. And the second I saw the line going around campus, I'm like, well, there's a good chance someone could shoot me. But... <laughs> This is really inspiring to see. This, wouldn't, this shouldn't happen, it shouldn't exist. And that's why YouTube and everyone in big tech, they're throttling independent creators and they're redirecting them back toward traditional cable TV and networks. And uh, yeah, listen, our channel was one of the hardest hit. Absolutely. And um, I'm about to say something here, but I want you to follow me, okay? Uh, we were the first conservative channel talking also about how many of you showed up. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to do that because I know, you know, sometimes that happens. Uh, but uh, we were the first conservative channel platform to ever survive an attack like Vox that was leveled against us. And when I say we, I mean all of you, okay? I mean, you didn't sit idly by on the sidelines. You'd seen other people. to mention chairs yeah you guys seriously though you guys didn't you guys didn't sit on the sidelines you'd seen other people who have been deplatformed before us and you decided to make a stand and you made it into a national conversation a national controversy we wouldn't have made it without you guys and i really do thank you from the bottom yes. of my heart i really appreciate it thank, thank you. you so much <laughs> so uh We've tried to unveil YouTube's blacklisting tactics right against conservative channels and the search results, as you've seen. Uh, just recently, we exposed uh, YouTube, this, I don't know if you watched it, uh, the suspicious blacklisting of Tulsi Gabbard's channel, exclusively in the United States. Who, who here followed that? Yeah. By the way, if you search Tulsi Gabbard's channel now, the first two videos that show up are from her channel, and the third result is her channel directly. And here's the thing, I don't think anyone here wants Tulsi Gabbard to be president. But that's what I appreciate and love about you guys, is I genuinely do see all of us defending people with whom we disagree because we understand that free speech is absolute and it is for all, regardless of how many assholes say you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. You know, you hear this all, all the time, the resistance, right? Resist Trump, everywhere from uh, Brie Larson and Captain Marvel to Dark Crystal, which was a real bummer because uh. Quarter Black Dead and I are nerds and we were watching the Dark yeah, Crystal world. Sad. Are these lesbian puppets? <laughs> <laughs> and I get it, it's an easy crossover, yeah. but the point is, they talk about resistance. Generations, you guys are the true resistance. You're resisting big tech, the most powerful companies that, by the way, have ever existed. I think we, it would be tough to argue that there's ever been a more powerful company in the history of the world as it relates to the delivery of information than Google and YouTube. And then right down that list, you have uh, Apple, you have Facebook, you have Amazon, you have Twitter somewhere on there, though I don't yeah. necessarily know where they are on that list because Jack Dorsey, I don't know what's happening with him. He took some mescaline or something. <laughs> So you guys are the true resistance, and that, that's a message that needs to be driven home, and that's something that we try to talk about in our platform. Even though I'm not Generation Z, all of us have talked about this when we sit around in our pitch meetings in the morning, and we go, oh my God, it's just incredible. This didn't exist. You know, I've been on YouTube since 2009. I wish I could be an overnight success. That's not what happened. It was a really, really slow slog uphill, and then all of a sudden, it's just like the curtains parted, and, and you guys were all here. So what does this mean, though, for, for 2020? Well, first off, for people watching the stream, I think I should, what do I look into this? I look into a camera. Uh, hit the notification bell if you're subscribed on YouTube because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. And just bookmark the page. We have a new page every single day uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern. Is that it, quarter yes. back You have a better sense of time. That is though, correct. Even though you're always late, but that's just the quarter of you. That is just the quarter. He's don't hold against me. You're also a quarter bad tipper. I don't know. It's very unpredictable. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's what it is now? We just had Prime Minister Trudeau in blackface. Some gentle ribbing of my producer. <laughs> Should be ashamed of yourself. And of course, people who are out How there, dare you. do join Mug Club, uh, lotofcredit.com slash Mug Club. Uh, you get $20 off if you use the Crowder Spectacular code. So what does this mean uh, for 2020? Well, let me tell you, the stakes for 2020, uh, I, I, again, I don't want to speak for the opposition. And this is something we've always tried to do when we watched leftist shows. They would just say something. And we would go, well, where'd you get that from? And they would just say, well, that's absolutely right. I'm like, well, hold on, why don't you show me? And there are never any sources. They were well, the conservatives who want to reach into your vagina and tell you what you can and can't do. I'm like, well, I've never heard that. And I go to church. Like, I know a lot of conservatives. 
Oh, do you have a source? No, so we always try and provide sources. They're always available. We always have a little uh, lower third. So in this case, how, dra how severe are the 2020 um, stakes? I, I want the voice of political opposition with whom I disagree, I want them to speak for themselves. This is what you could be facing, Generation Z, in 2020. You know, the UN just released a study that said we're going to be okay if the vast majority of the world goes vegetarian immediately. Some of it is with light bulbs, some of it is on straws, some of it, dang, is on cheeseburgers, right? Colleges, churches, charities, dang. should they lose their tax-exempt status if they oppose same-sex marriage? Yes. Hailing New York Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo for passing a historic bill legalizing abortion up until birth. The infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. Just because a woman or let's also not forget someone in the trans community, a trans female. <laughs> Uh, is poor doesn't mean they shouldn't have the right to exercise that right to choose. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. Oh. To use against our oh. if, if it makes you feel any better, he fell off his skateboard. Yes. Okay. Self-inflicted harm. You guys are shouting at the street like you know they can't hear you, right? They will hear us. Um, so let's, let's, let's recap that real quick. Beto wants to go to your house and take, confiscate your guns and jail you if, even if you refuse. Every single candidate, except for Tulsi Gabbard, wants abortions all the way up until birth, but she's a radical right-wing extremist because she wants the cutoff to be seven months. The Democrats have voiced support for the Equality Act, which would mean that female uh, transgenders could compete in any women's division, in any sport they want, join women's groups, churches, and force beauticians to wax their balls. Yes. Men have periods, too, and they know that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is just one choking on a Werther's original away from the Supreme Court being changed forever. <laughs> they are petrified of Generation Z. They are petrified of you. And then I do have to get going. We're going to have a quick reel. I'm going to come back for yep. a Q&A. I have to go see the overflow room. But here's, I know often people just, it's really easy to come out and just bitch. Right? And I don't think we've been bitching. I've been talking about how great this is for Generation Z, but that doesn't mean that there aren't some steps you need to take. And sometimes people ask me, well, how, how, do we, how do we fight back against this? Because, as you mentioned, these are huge companies, big tech. These are huge companies, the media, entertainment, industrial complex. Here, it, it, it's really pretty simple, okay? Let's just, let's be consistent. We remain entirely consistent and campaign against any and all culture of censorship. I want Generation Z, I want everyone out there to hear the Young Turks and to hear Trevor Noah and to hear Samantha Bee speak for themselves every single week so that we can be here and rebut it. I want to hear Beto everywhere. I want to hear the Democrats cheering gun confiscation. I want them out there banning Halloween candy. I want, I, I want us to be able to cover fathers who could potentially lose custody of their children because they didn't opt to castrate them chemically, effectively. What is it that we do? We can't change what is going on in the world, some of these crazy stories. But what we can do is, rather than the left in attempting to silence voices of dissent, we make sure that their voices are amplified. I want to make sure that every single far-left candidate and channel, and I hope that you join me, supports the right of all of them to be on these platforms, to get the same level playing field with suggested feeds, with trending videos. That's all we've ever asked for. People don't necessarily understand. Our case against YouTube is not about censorship. It's about dishonest business practices and not applying the law equally. I think we all need to demand from every single major company who can determine elections, we need to demand what the guidelines are, that we know them, and that there's some system of transparency so that we know that they are applying these laws equally. I want everyone here to be as public and as vocal as possible because here's the deal. The left, they want to silence us. They want to silence you. They want to ban people. Right, right now they're talking about banning political ads on Twitter. Has anyone ever thought, do they, does that mean they're banning all media ads? Well, what kind of advantage do you think that is for the left? Donald Trump can't run an ad, nor can Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren but ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, they can all run ads. Do you see what's happening there? It's yep. so subversive. What they want is these conversations to happen behind closed doors and to silence people they disagree with. We shouldn't be doing that. We should demand that their voices be heard on the exact same platform with the exact same amplitude as we do. And instead of behind closed doors, we should make it a very public dogfight in execution ideologically in the streets so that everyone can witness which ideology is correct. Thank you.
Hey, hey, I hope you enjoyed this clip. If you don't, these are the ABCs of me, baby. You can just click next video and put it in double speed. Of course, search doesn't necessarily work. Subscriptions, notifications don't necessarily work. Just bookmark this page, check in. We do a new video every single day, except for Sunday. And if you don't want this content to disappear, join Mug Club at lighterwithcredit.com slash mug club. It's only $69 if you're a student, veteran, or active military. And um, if you don't, you know, listen, I, I don't want to say that you're hellbound, but it, it doesn't look good for you.